Hey friends, thank you for joining me for my podcast this week. And I am excited because today I am talking with my dear friends about online dating. Now, my friend Pearl has been my good friend for over 20 years. She has prayed for me over these years, encouraged me, and just has just been an incredible friend. And honestly, one of the main voices in my life of why I even started this podcast was through Pearl's encouraging me every time we talked for like two years straight <laughs> to start this um, video podcast. So today I wanted to thank her, Pearl, and her husband, Brian, for being on here because they have a really unique story, I feel like, about how the Lord brought them together. And they've been married for a few years now, and the Lord brought them together through online dating. And so this has been um, just a testimony I wanted to share with everyone listening, especially for my single folks. I have a lot of single friends that really the Lord has given me a burden for, and I feel like Pearl and Brian's story can really encourage your hearts today. So Pearl and Brian, is there anything else you guys want to share about yourselves? No, no. Hello, everyone. And first, I just want to say thank you so much for having us on, Eunice. It's been such a pleasure watching you grow in this space. And thank Aww. you for your kind words. We've been friends forever. Oh, thanks. Could you guys start by actually telling us how long you guys have been married and then also how long you guys dated? Sure. We've been married just over four years now, and we dated for about 18 months from when we first met online until uh, we actually got married. Wow. Awesome. Okay. So let's jump into the questions. Why did you decide to try online dating? You go first. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it was actually a process for me. I first learned about online dating in my mid twenties. And at that time, there were thoughts that went through my mind. I was a missionary overseas at that time. And I thought, well, I'm not really meeting anybody on the field. So maybe it would be a great idea to look online. There's more people, right? And other people are doing it. But then at that time I was in my late twenties and I really felt the Lord tell me to just take a breather, and that um, I shouldn't be dating at that time. So when I felt that sort of conviction or that pause, you know, that check in my spirit, I decided to hold off. And then it was in my early, th mid thirties, uh, after I survived cancer, that um, a prophetic woman at my church, a friend of the family, actually brought it up and recommended it to me because uh, she felt that I guess she was prompted by the Holy Spirit that it was time for me to put myself out there. And initially I um, told her no, because I remembered that prompting from the Holy Spirit a decade before. And she just said, Pearl, pray about it. It's not like the Lord said no forever, did he? And I'm like, hmm, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was like when the Lord speaks once, right? Isn't that, isn't that what it means forever? And so she encouraged me to pray about it. So I did. And I really felt at that time, the Lord had lifted his hand off the no. I re really felt like the Lord gave me the green light. So wow. I did some homework. Um, I asked my friends who had done online dating, who had maybe met their spouses online. And um, I set up my little profile. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so Brian. As, as for me, I... I was taking much more of a passive approach to dating uh, throughout my 30s, thinking I'll just trust God and eventually the right woman will appear, whether at church or work or somehow or a small group, somehow that I would end up meeting her. And right around you know 40 years of age, I kind of realized, well, I really need to do my part on this as well. And I had dabbled with some of the, the different platforms of dating platforms earlier in my 30s, but when I kind of felt convicted that I really need to do more in order to be able to meet someone, that's when I took the time to actually go ahead and identify which site it would be, what was important to me, what things could I lay aside. And that's why I decided to, to go ahead and join. Oh, I love that. Okay. So 
what expectations or assumptions did you have about online dating? As far as expectations, um, certainly the, I, I don't know, I know when I first joined and, and started to get matched, my expectation was I was going to find that right person right away because mm. with eHarmony and having their uh, algorithms and the way that they set things up, I thought, oh, this will just be an easy process. I'll probably meet somebody within the first month and be able to, to go ahead and date them and go through the entire you know, engagement and dating process. And it didn't really work out that way. It ended up taking me 13 months before Pearl and I were actually matched up. Oh, cool. Hmm, let me think. Are, are you talking about expectations we had specifically or stereotypes? concerning online dating that were out there mm, you specifically but stereotypes would be interesting <laughs> well like I ones think, that you had stereotypes yeah you had, stereotypes so. that I had before before I had friends who met their spouses online stereotypes where you couldn't meet anybody by yourself or you needed help or that you know I, I was um, beyond help or <laughs> I was too old or yeah, or, or in the Christian space that I wasn't trusting God, right? Oh. That people who were going online to go date, they were uh, running ahead of God and they were uh, uh, doing the work for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a good one. I think a lot, I've heard that from other Christians, like about like, okay, maybe I'm not trusting God if I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, what would you say to that? How did you overcome even that one? Well, I think for me, the, the first thing I did before I joined uh, online or even researched the online uh, different e online platforms was I had to pray about it. I had mm -hmm. to feel peace in my spirit that this was an option mm -hmm. for dating for me, right? It's just like uh, joining a small group or going to speed dating. It's online dating is just one place where you can meet potential people. Uh, dating partners, right? Um, yeah, I think for me, that's what it was, that I actually read a book called Modern Romance. It was written several years ago, like 2015, 2016, written by a comedian named Aziz Ansari, Aziz Ansari. And uh -huh. he actually did an anthropological study on online dating. And it's not Christian, wow. but I found it really helpful because he did all these like focus groups and all that. And he just broke down how online dating basically is just another way to meet people. Just like in the past, people met through other people through church or um, small group, or they were being set up. But now as of 2015 or 16, 44% of people getting married met online. Wow. I had no idea. That's a big number. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So what did you enjoy about online dating and what did you guys dislike about it? You want to take that first? You can go okay. first. <laughs> uh, let me think about it. Let me think about it. <laughs> what I enjoyed about it was the, the fact that I did realize that there were other single women out there who were interested in dating who are actually taking the time to, on their own time, to look and say that I'm available and interested in, in meeting someone. So that aspect of it gave me hope that I could actually end up meeting someone. Because going into your 40s, not having dated much, you know, I met people here and there, but not having dated very much, you kind of get to that point of, not despair, but just you start to lose hope a little bit. Like, am I getting too old? Is, mm -hmm. it, you know, is it the person I'm going to end up looking for meeting just completely not what I'm uh, not what I would prefer so knowing that going on there and be able to take that time and see that they were uh, women out there that was very helpful as far as things that I disliked about it uh, I remember the very first match that I reached out to I thought yep this will be you know she's got all these great qualities she, I enjoyed reading her profile you send that invitation out there to connect and you never hear anything. <laughs> so that aspect of not really ghosting, but just not getting any sort of response. And it took me a while to understand that 
there are matches out there, there are profiles out there where the people had moved on because they met somebody, but they just didn't take the time to go back and deactivate their profile. So it wasn't so much that they were just ignoring me, it was the fact that they just weren't active on the system at all. Oh, wow. Okay. I love that perspective because I can see where you would feel like a little like snubbed or whatever, but that is interesting that maybe people just forgot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man. I, I, there was one I got matched up eventually with a a gal who was part of my small group, a single small group. And at that point she had already met somebody else and gotten married. So I was like, okay, I that makes it very clear that she just didn't go back and deactivate. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. oh man. <laughs> okay, Pearl, how about you? Um a positive. Well, it, it was a positive experience. Dating online was a positive experience. Because I think when I walked into it, I had um, quote unquote correct expectations because I had done a little research or a lot of research by asking friends who had gone through the process of online dating and actually met and married their spouse, you know, met their spouses, got married online. So they were able to help me navigate the highs and the lows of online dating. So a benefit for online dating was just the number of available people. I mean, it was encouraging, just like Brian said, Mm. to go online and to know that there were other people also interested in meeting somebody or meeting me. Um, It was also nice to know that eventually I I chose eHarmony to go go dating on or chose that that for my online platform because uh, I liked their structure I like the process that they organized. I like that the algorithm so that the people that they matched up with me and they sent me their profiles or their pictures every day, I had things in common with these people. So it was like, I had to trust the system and I actually enjoyed it instead of navigating thousands of profiles. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But the negative was also, um, People are not always who they say they are online. And I think that was an ex. Okay, so going back to expectations, that was an expectation that I thought was in my head that was quickly crushed. I thought, hey, if I join eHarmony, everybody's going to be an awesome Christian and they're going to do the right thing. And we're all doing this <laughs> glorify God. Oh, <laughs> okay. And, and I met plenty of great uh, godly men online. There were plenty of them, but there were situations where I had to remind myself that everybody's human and that uh, everyone's uh, definition of Christian is, is different. Oh, okay. Hmm, That sounds very real. Okay. Yes. Very real. Online (laughs) dating is very real. Yeah. (laughs) Slash not, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So was there anything in particular that you found surprising? Surprising. Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How vulnerable you have to be to mm. uh, date online because you're setting up your profile and you're putting it out there for the algorithm people at eHarmony. I mean, everything's computerized, <laughs> but anybody who wanted to look at my profile, they could look. Mm -hmm. Anybody that they match me up with could look at my profile and I have to put on paper in words, my interests, my passions, maybe my weaknesses. I had to answer any questions that a potential uh, match sent me Mm -hmm. if I wanted to, right? So it was just, I had to put my life out there. I had to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to share my deepest, deepest, darkest secrets, but just to put my person out there and in some ways you know, be judged yeah and there's even times you'd have to go back and refine your profile mm-hmm. you couldn't mm-hmm. go through and answer the initial questions again and change that part of it but meeting women on there meeting matches and talking to them and getting their questions and feedback based upon what you wrote sometimes you had to go back and rewrite or fine-tune what it was that you had originally written in order to get better 
exposure and, and also better matches so they have a better idea of who you actually are. Right. Hmm. You have to verbally write down or try to represent to the best of your ability who you are. Wow. That sounds like a lot of work. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to be an honest, open mm -hmm. person. Yeah. Which yeah. of course. The way I, viewed it, I took the time to answer these questions and put effort out there. So I would hope that they would have that same level of interest mm -hmm. or effort into answering their own questions so that that way, if I read their profile, then I can go through and discern, is this somebody I want to talk to or not? If they only answered one or, you know, if they answered a question with one or two sentences mm. or just a few words, then typically I would just skip right over them. Hmm. Why? What would that mean to you if it was just like concise? That, that they just didn't really take the time to mm -hmm. expand on it. And my concern would be that once we start getting into a conversation, that they would answer questions back that same way. But, you know, if they didn't, if they didn't mm. really care about how they presented themselves and mm -hmm. the information they're putting out there, then why, when we start dating and talking face to face, would they take that time and effort to go ahead and, and provide a good answer, a concise answer at that time? Huh. Yeah, if I saw someone on their profile, they only wrote cons you know, a few words or they skipped questions, I would wonder how sincere they were. I would also huh. wonder if they're just interested in looking at pictures, mm -hmm. like if they were just more superficial. And I would also wonder if um, they were just there to meet people. They weren't there to try to find the love of their lives. Because mm -hmm. that's something I found out, Eunice. Well. Uh, I found out that there are some people who joined even eHarmony, they paid money every month and they had been on there for years and years and they just enjoyed talking to people. They weren't interested in really dating anybody. They just found it a good place to find men or women, or at least, you know, my situation, women to talk to, like smart women to talk to. Wow. I okay. have an example. There was someone that um, I met online um, we went through all the, you know, steps where we actually talked on the phone. We talked on the phone. We had a good conversation, you know, we, books that we read, that they enjoyed Hamilton. We loved history. And I was all excited <laughs> about this, uh, this match. But I felt something in my spirit that was, that there was something weird about it. So I didn't continue um, the conversation with this a gentleman. Three years later, I was looking through the profile of one of my friends because she asked me to look. And she was asking me about the same guy. Wow. And that she had talked to him, but he didn't really want to meet. And it was just, he was interested in talking, but he didn't want to meet. Okay, that is interesting. Hmm. So just an avenue to meet friends. Right. Mm -hmm. And the pictures, I think the pictures were really old because they hadn't been changed in three years. <laughs> and so to me, it made me wonder, like, is this guy married? Is this guy just creepy? Right. He, he didn't want to meet me. He didn't want to meet her. They'd just been talking for months. Wow. Okay. Well, this is a good it's real. It's in, real. <laughs> a good lead into the next question, which is how do you persevere through negative aspects of online dating? Whether it be like, you know, you were interested in someone and then maybe they just stopped talking to you, or I, I don't know. I you guess you felt that's a check scenario. in your spirit. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 Or like that person that maybe Brian was like oh she's cool and then it turns out she just forgot to shut down her profile like mm -hmm. how did you overcome those just negative aspects because I could imagine that'd be very discouraging in the middle of it oh yeah you, because you're putting yourself out mm -hmm. there it's so easy to take everything so personally yeah right uh -huh. it's so For easy sure. to take it personally uh you know 
my, per, you know, I, I, it's already sensitive. My ego is already sensitive, <laughs> putting myself out there. And for someone to ghost me or, you know, not meet me somewhere or not call me back or not respond to my questions, it, 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 it's hurtful. I did get ghosted one time and I had to learn from that experience not to take it personal. And one of my friends um, told me, she gave me great advice because I was ghosted and I was just wondering, is it me? He even confirmed the day before that we were talking, but he just never called. And I was so tempted to reach out and write, maybe there was a technical difficulty. <laughs> uh -huh. This is month two or month one in, into my online dating experience. And I told my friend and she just said, Pearl, you're not here to make friends. Don't take it personally. This is his issue. He's got issues going on. And now you need to huh. move on. This person is not for you. You need to move on next. Wow. And it just made me feel so much better because it wasn't just me because she had experiences also and that it was just one negative experience. And I just thought about me and how it hurt my feelings instead of thinking about it like, oh, he has things going on too. Mm -hmm. And, and part of it is just understanding that you're putting hope into the process, not putting a hope into a particular person. Mm. And so the, the end goal in hmm. any online dating, at least from our perspective, is to meet somebody that you're going to want to get married to. And that was my entire approach to it, is being able to find that one that I want to be married to for the rest of my life. So when you do run into those negative aspects, whether it's somebody who is ghosting you or somebody who just responds back now and then, you just, you get to that point of understanding. It's like, okay, this is not the match for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue on and, and eventually I'll find the, the right one. And that's and exactly what happened with us. You know, Pearl was on eHarmony for a few weeks and I was on there for 13 months before we met. So it's just a matter of putting a hope in the process. Wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. That uh -huh. situation or that experience, I just wanted to add one more thing. It's important to be intentional and to, you have to also control how you're thinking during this whole time. Mm. Like you can't allow the process to be an idol. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't allow uh, someone else's response to dictate how I feel about myself. Nice. And, uh -huh. Right. And, and it, every step or in every interaction, I learned to be very intentional, like to control my mind. So it's not like crazy. Oh my goodness, this person is going to be the one. And I hadn't even met them yet. Right. <laughs> or <laughs> we went on one coffee date. Oh my goodness. I'm going to stop talking to everybody else. And this is going to, this is going to be it. But to take each step very intentionally and to present it before the Lord. And that even if there are negative things that happen, I just have to remember, I'm just going to keep going. This is not a statement on me or my self-worth or my spirituality or who I am. Wow. Okay. That takes a very mature person, but I think it's amazing advice <laughs> to, you know, really not internalize it. So I love that advice because that's true. I never thought about it like that. Um, okay, so what encouragement would you give to singles who are on the fence about trying online dating? I think it, I would give the, the advice of just enjoy the time. Right? Mm, enjoy know, remember, the process. Yeah, enjoy the process. Remember what your intention is, that you are looking to for somebody who you're going to get married to. And it's okay to go ahead and make that clear up front that that's why you're on there is the intent to get married. Because that will actually sometimes remove some of those matches who aren't sure why they're on there. So if it's your intent <laughs> to get married and you feel that God has put that onto your heart, then just go out there and, and enjoy the process. Enjoy the time of being able to meet new people that you may never actually meet face to face, but for even building the skills of being able to get to know somebody, this is a, a good process to be able to do that. So that when you do meet the right person, that whether it's online or offline or in real life, 
then you've already taken that time to understand more about yourself and what's important to you and the questions you want to ask for the person that you're, you're meeting and dating at that time. So my encouragement to people who are on the fence is pray about it, right? Before we do anything, where we go to college, which mm -hmm. house we buy, which books we're going to read, which car I'm going to buy, we, we pray about it, right, as Christians. So I would just encourage this young man or this man or woman <laughs> to pray about it. And if you have peace about it, just jump right in and enjoy the process. Figure out which platform you want to go with, right? Because they're all different now. And some of them are a little more uh, constrained and strict. And some of them are more uh, free for all. That means you can look at as many profiles or as many people as you would like to. And I would just say, this is just another avenue to meet people. Just like joining a singles group or going to a singles church or doing a speed dating or being set up or joining a book club, right? <laughs> or joining a intramural slapper mm -hmm. team. This is just an avenue to meet another, to meet a potential partner. Hmm. And that's good it's advice. Not a, it's not an end all be all. Yeah, it's not an end all be all. It's <laughs> yeah. not an end all be all. It's just one way it's just the Lord might oh. use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I have a question because I know at your wedding, um, there were a lot of couples actually that um, Pearl had told me like had met online. So yes. I am curious mm -hmm. of your friends who have gotten married for, to someone that they met online. Mm -hmm. How long was the longest dating process that you've heard of? I'm curious. Oh boy, um, you might have a better idea. <laughs> so Brian, you said yours was like about 13 months before you right. connected with Pearl. Yeah. But do you know friends who were longer or not really? Oh, you mean how long they were online or how yeah, long? Yeah, how long they were like online doing oh, it. Oh, before they met their, uh, mm -hmm. I've known two and a half, three years, three years. Okay, yeah. all right. Because for some um, people who didn't have the group, uh, the community mm -hmm. that we both had, which we were thankful for, but if they were you know, pioneers in their community for online dating in their communities, they had to like look at or check out different platforms. Like if one company might not work out for them, they go with a different company okay. or they're figuring out their own rhythm when they're dating online or they have to find out um, how many hours they want to spend online or they want to find out, they had to figure out for themselves um, how many dates they want to go on per week, per month and how many people they want to talk to at one time. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Two to three years. That's okay. That's pretty intense. Yeah. Th that, but that, encouraging that, information. <laughs> yes, because many people, just like Brian thought, he thought I'm going to go online, right? Uh, E-Harmony is going to throw all these great matches at me. Ta-da, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's going to happen in six months or something from like a Hallmark movie, right? But it, Real life isn't like that. Mm. It's just like if you were set up with someone, it, it, there's no guarantee that you're going to hit it off with that person and you're going to get married in a year. Mm -hmm. I love that advice because I do know people who definitely thought the way Brian did when he started. So for sure, I've heard that. That, that seems like a common expectation or hope. So I love that you guys spoke into that. Um, okay. Next question. Mm -hmm. How did you decide which online dating platform to use? I had tried a couple of different ones. For me, it was always trying to find somebody or find a platform that was faith-based or at least faith oriented. So I had tried some of the Christian Mingle, Christian Cafe, mainly because they were free, but that was my earlier attempt. <laughs> and I really decided to get serious and go with eHarmony. It was because they had the process of uh, basically an interview of going through Vetting. and answering mm -hmm. questions, you know, multiple choice and saying, this is what I prefer. This is how I would handle this situation. So it was an entire process that they uh, took you through in order to make sure that they were giving you the best matches for them including that aspect of faith. And that was really one of the more, and not more, the most important aspect. Uh, and even when I, after I got through the profile and started using it, 
something I would look for in the profiles that I got matched to is, is there evidence of their faith on there? Uh, I assume mm -hmm. the algorithm matched us because faith was important to mm -hmm. both of us, but if it wasn't something they were willing to put onto their profile, I'd be a little more hesitant or concerned about trying to reach out to them because that's something that was important to me. And I want to make sure that we had a shared interest uh, in our faith. Hmm. That's good. For me, I did a little bit of homework. Of <laughs> I so I Googled, you know, Christian cafe, Christian mingle. And when we did online dating six years ago, um, there were just maybe half a dozen mm -hmm. reputable platforms or companies. And now there's just so, so many, but for me, it was always going to be harmony just because uh, I think the vetting is more rigorous, even though you still meet, you know, questionable people, but you have to pay for it. And I really believe anything that you pay for, you have more skin in the game and you're more likely to meet mm. people who are serious about the process as well. Cause it's not free. Free. Yeah, that makes sense. You're not, you don't have to sacrifice anything right. to yeah. get a product, right? But if you have to pay that $40, $50 a month, you will hopefully meet more qualified. When I say qualified, I mean quality people. Um, mm -hmm. You're also going to have more skin in the game because you're mm -hmm. going to put some effort into it because I'm paying $40 or $50. And I love that it was, um, there was vetting. So before Brian and I could even speak, there were like five stages. So one oh, wow. was, yeah, he could, you know, I could wink at him or he could wink at me. Then you can send someone multiple choice questions, only three. And then if I were interested, I could send him a list of um, likes, and likes and dislikes. And then the next stage is just three free form questions. Then we could have each other's emails. And if we got to that email, then we can exchange phone numbers if we wanted to. So I just felt like every stage was more, uh, in some ways, guarded or protected because there are crazies out there. And I don't mm -hmm. want to meet a crazy person. I just wanted <laughs> to be, I wanted to lower the risk so I could be in an environment where I could feel comfortable and secure. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. It's mm -hmm. like that, that idea of like people who pay for gym memberships, <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go work out because I paid for this. Like yes. I am invested in this process. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So once you get online, how did mm -hmm. you guys decide who you were going to talk to from like that list of people that maybe eHarmony matched you with mm -hmm. or whatever? Mm -hmm. I first thing I did was I would look at their profiles. I mean, of course, I check out their photos too. Yes. But I, more importantly, I would look at their profile. I would look at their what their likes and uh, five things that they couldn't live without, mm -hmm. or some basic intro questions. And if faith, Christian faith, was something that I was definitely looking for. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I had a, a similar process, you know, and admittedly you do look at the photos first and that is the first thing that catches your attention but then it is a matter of digging into what is important to them what is it that they want to communicate in their profile mm -hmm. uh, looking primarily for how their faith plays into their everyday life and you, you also end up kind of looking for some inconsistencies you know mm. it's something that they said here doesn't match up with over there then that's a question you can ask later on Huh. Um, are they being fully honest about who they actually are? So those, those are some of the things that I would try to dig into and look, look for. One of the things that I did with the freeform questions, which is that third stage in the process, is actually asking them directly, who is Jesus to you? Because it's very easy as a Christian <laughs> to say, oh, I'm, I'm Christian or I believe in Jesus, but not actually have that shared faith. Yeah. That was the thing Pearl was very impressed with. But no, actually, <laughs> no, no, I, I was not. In fact, uh, his three free form questions, I was actually really offended by. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think I actually told him that. Why? They were personal. I, I, I realized uh... I'm hoping with my testimony, but I'm fairly personal about certain aspects of my relationship with God. 
And he's asking questions like, why do you want to get married? Yes. <laughs> yeah, why was why were you on the here dating? Or why Who is, is Jesus to you? To you? So. <laughs> and you felt yeah, like what? It was yet. too soon? Yes. Oh, so it was too soon. But at the same time, huh. I, I answered them briefly because I wanted him to know I could answer these questions, but I also let him know that I thought they were inappropriate. Yeah, you know, and there was some matches, <laughs> especially with that, that Jesus question about who is Jesus to you, their answers just did not match up. They were mm. they were trying to skirt around the issue. So it, it, in some aspects, you know, it helped to go ahead and weed out um, the matches that were not good matches for me. Okay, so even though pearls were concise, they must have matched up for you. Yes, yeah, she answered, you know, even though she felt offended and she was the only one who ever told me that she was offended by the question. The other ones probably just didn't answer it, but <laughs> yes, uh, even though she was offended by the, the <laughs> question about why she was on there and looking to do online dating, um, she still answered the questions well and, and prompted me to want to continue the conversation. Okay, that's <laughs> hilarious. And I, yeah, I could totally see that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eunice. <laughs> well, I answer. I was really tempted not to answer any of them and just write him mean responses. But I also felt like part huh. of this journey, wh wherever I am, whether it's online dating or at work, I'm also a witness for Christ. So I felt like <laughs> this was my opportunity to share my testimony, even though it was only in one or two sentences for each of the questions because he was asking Christian questions about my uh, questions about my faith. So I felt like, okay, I'm gonna answer them, but not go into detail and then let him know that I didn't like the questions. <laughs> I actually love this story because I didn't know it, number one, but number two, I could totally see your personalities come out in this. And then number three, <laughs> yes. this goes back to what Pearl was talking about earlier about the vulnerability. Mm, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. stayed offended you literally would have missed your husband mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that is really fascinating to me um that you were tempted to be massively offended <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah because mm -hmm. yeah, we lived a thousand miles apart yeah. at that time yeah. so mm -hmm. we would never cross paths if she hadn't answered the question and despite wow <laughs> Wow. Well, I love that you were willing to be vulnerable, Pearl, because um, I think you guys are a great match. So, well, okay. <laughs> so do you guys have any last comments for those people who are listening? Yes. yes. I, I, I have one. Okay. I already talked about being an intentional when you're um, dating, not just online, but just dating in general, right? Okay. The number two thing is um, have a community around you to support you while you're mm. doing online dating. That might sound a little cheesy, but it wasn't for me. It really helped me out because I had to be open. So I found some quote unquote accountability partners. These were men and women who had gone through the process before me and they can speak into my life. So I wasn't doing anything questionable or I wouldn't take things too personally because they could speak life into me and bring me back to reality because wow. it's really easy to sit behind a screen and feel all these emotions that sometimes aren't real. Mm. And they looked at my profile, you know, they would talk me down from a ledge sometimes, or if I was too eager, they would say, chill out. And they also encouraged me to go on weekly dates or you know, two dates a month or three dates a month. And they really helped me walk through the process. And so I didn't treat it like it was just, oh, doing something once a week. I actually treated it where it was like a part-time job. I spent eight to 10 hours online every week. Yeah. Okay. By community specifically, you mean um, like people who have gone before you, who have successfully online dated? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because that I think is key because I was not, even though we're good friends, I was mm -hmm. not a part of that community because <laughs> I literally, I, I had, that's why I wanted to do this interview because I do feel like kind of helpless sometimes helping and encouraging my friends who 
are in this process because I really, I, you know, I met Chris when we were 22. We got married when I was 23. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I became a mom when I was 23. Like I really have not walked in that path, but I do think like it is a path that the Lord uses. And so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. So get around people who've actually successfully done this. Well, I think that's they don't awesome. have to have married someone they met uh-huh. online, but just they've gone through the process, right? They okay. have wisdom to share. Uh huh. So you don't yeah. have to reinvent the wheel and yeah. feel alone. You don't have to feel alone. Feel alone. I love that. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, and even for the close friends who maybe haven't used eHarmony or, or online dating profile, mm-hmm. sometimes just even sharing your profile with them to get their honest feedback mm. is helpful because mm-hmm. they're always going to have a perspective of not only your actual profile, but then who you actually are. And they say, well, I understand why you wrote this, but it might be better worded this particular way. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. cool. And the other thing is, you know, as Pearl said earlier, just keeping God at the center of it, just as the intent is to have a marriage where God is at the center of the marriage is that that third aspect of your marriage. Same thing with the entire dating process and uh, whether it's online or offline, presenting each aspect of it to God saying, okay, is this the route that I should go? Should I do it online or should I try to meet people offline? Uh, You know, is this a particular match that I should be reaching out to or not? Mm -hmm. Just keeping him active in the entire process is something I highly encourage because that will eventually then help to weed out who the the mismatches are and who the the right match actually is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, That's good advice. Question for you guys, knowing your story. So Pearl lived in one state, Brian, you lived in a totally different state. How did you guys even decide to expand your search in that regard? Well, I, I might be better geared towards this because I was on there much longer. So with, at least with eHarmony, you could get to a point where the matches, if you left it in a particular geographic area, whether it was state or mile radius, the matches didn't start to match up. It's almost like they were running out of people who were good matches. So they were mm-hmm. kind of giving you the almost matches. Um, so then that would prompt me at that point. It's like, I need to go ahead and expand my my geographical location I'm willing to to look at in order to be able to get some better matches. And you kind of just end up playing with it over time, sometimes expanding, sometimes contracting it. And that tended to then uh, allow the algorithm to find those better matches for you. Um, But yeah, even with when Pearl and I matched, I think I had reviewed her profile and I didn't reach out to her immediately. She actually sent me the, the wink first on there um because i had always <laughs> planned on, on maybe visiting texas never planned on living here so it wasn't <laughs> we got matched necessarily that i considered immediately i see okay so pearl winked at you and then you were like okay here's someone in texas who i'm attracted to maybe i'll reach out yes yeah i, wow. I reached out to her and sent her the questions instead of just doing the wink back and forth i figured okay let's just ask the questions and see how how that comes. And it, yeah, I tended to be the much quicker responder on yes, there. He but <laughs> I sent the wink well. in the morning. And then I think in a couple of hours, I just got questions and I just yeah. felt like, whoa, okay, I'm going <laughs> to hold off on this. Wait 24 hours. <laughs> you know? Cause it was a little intense. Oh, mm-hmm. right? okay. I love that. So thank you guys so much for sharing your story. Honestly, I wanted to share you guys with my audience because I just love you guys. I actually got to attend their wedding, which was a miracle in itself. At first, when Pearl invited me to their wedding, we were living overseas and we didn't realize we would transition back to the States in time. And so I got to go to your wedding. So that was my first time meeting Brian. And I was so impressed by just um, just your love for one another and how attentive Brian was to you, Pearl. Like it really, it really moved my heart because you know, guys, like I said earlier, uh, Pearl and I have been friends for over twenty years. Yes. So this is like us praying together over her husband for a long time. 
Thanks, Eunice. <laughs> <laughs> but he is faithful. The Lord answers prayers. And yeah. to see the fulfillment of the Lord answering our prayers over so many years was really moving to be at your wedding and to see just how the Lord so well matched you guys. Mm -hmm. And, but what's crazy is one person might consider, oh, is an online match, like a God match, Mm. like the Lord connected Pearl and Brian in a different way than me and Chris, but it is for sure just his hand in it. And it is a God match because like when I saw your, you guys together, and even like all these years walking with you guys, talking with Pearl I am always just amazed by the Lord's faithfulness to you guys, because you guys really Mm -hmm. just have a lot of peace, a lot of love, a lot of grace in your marriage, which isn't that usual necessarily in the first four years of someone's married life, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wanted to share your story with everyone, because I have just seen the Lord's faithfulness through this. So it is like Pearl said earlier, one avenue that the Mm -hmm. Lord uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I wanted to end with this scripture, Psalm 16, starting at verse five, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. And why I wanted to share the scripture is for all the singles out there who have been waiting upon the Lord. Again, this could just be one way the Lord might use in your life. And Mm -hmm. so like Brian and Pearl encouraged everyone is like, just pray about it. Invite the Lord into your singleness, into your dating process, just like you will invite him into your marriage one day. And so I love um, just how your story can encourage so many people out there, guys. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> do okay. So do you have any last one word of thought or anything that you want to share? One word, or can I? Can it be a sentence? <laughs> sentence. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to. I guess just encourage everyone with this word. Like if you do the online dating and we, I only have experience with eHarmony really, trust the algorithm, trust the algorithm. On resume, on a piece of paper, if Brian and I swapped resumes, we wouldn't have picked each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we wouldn't have, but I just feel so blessed like Eunice said earlier that this guy gets me. Like the Lord knew the people at eHarmony who wrote the algorithm knew that our match would be successful because it's not just about appearance. It's not just about education. It's not just about where you grew up. It's really about your love for the Lord and who you are at the core. Uh, We didn't even know until we were engaged that we had so much in common, Hmm. like inside. Mm -hmm. On the outside, we don't look alike at all. (laughs) <laughs> we come from very different backgrounds, but just our yeah. love for the Lord, our heart for missions, for his word, right? Architecture, British murder mysteries, you know, sense of humor. I mean, it, it all lined up, mm-hmm. but we didn't know this until we were engaged. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love that. Thank you for that encouragement, guys. So, okay. I hope everyone listening has an amazing day. Bye-bye. Bye.